Okay. In your USA Jobs profile, where obviously you need to use your name, address, and a phone number, I think it is important to know that only fields that have an asterisk are required to be filled out. Most of us, when we see a form, you know, we've all been well trained. We get ready to fill out every, every space possible. But USA Jobs has a lot of fields, most of which are not critical. Okay. So double check and only fill out the fields that are required. So what fields are there that aren't required? Let me give you an example. One of the fields I see people fill out all the time is where in the universe would you like to work? And of course, federal government jobs are all over the world, literally. So I see people who will check off 50, 60, 100 different locations in the universe where they want to work. What they don't realize is A, that's not a required field. B, no one really cares where you want to work. But C, and probably most importantly, when you do that, all of the ones that you check off as wanting to work, all the places, they show on your resume when it gets printed out vertically. So sometimes I don't even find out what your real job is until page two or three of your resume. So here's a clue. If you don't want to work in a particular location, don't apply for a job that's there. Don't worry about it. This is not a required field. Another non-required field which people feel compelled is what level of employee are you? I see employees check off everything in the same profile from intern, executive, mid-level manager. You cannot be both an intern and an executive. You look foolish, right? Don't fill it out. It's not required. Something else that is not required that I see people fill out all the time is, you know, do you want to work part-time, intermittent, telework, full-time, right? People check them all off. Aside from the pandemic, and I know for many of you, you are essential workers and there might as well not be a pandemic in terms of where you are working. You do not want to communicate a message of, hey, I'd really like this job where I never have to come into an office or meet you. Don't check off telework. Again, none of these are deal breakers, but think about who's reading this and the message you are communicating to your potential employers. Right. Another piece that I think is important to be thinking about in your USA Jobs profile is your eligibilities. You may in fact have veterans preference, but if you don't check off in your USA Jobs profile what veterans preference you have and upload the requisite documents, you might as well not have it. Some of you depending on your individual situation, may be eligible to apply for the same job as many as four different ways. Some of you might be VEOA eligible, but you might also be 30% or more compensably rated. You may also be VRA eligible and you get 10 points. Now, Many of you are also direct hire, you know, so it might not matter, but you might as well take advantage of all of your eligibilities. Know the demographic information is not required. You don't have to fill that out. You don't get extra points for being a something where we're underrepresented. That information actually does not go to HR anyway that information goes directly to the EEO office. Okay, 
some other eligibilities that you might be unaware of if I have any military spouses. If anybody is Schedule A eligible, which is for people with disabilities, you might be a returning Peace Corps or VISTA volunteer, AmeriCorps volunteer. There's lots of different eligibilities in terms of hiring opportunities and make sure that you know what yours are and you understand what they mean. You apply correctly okay? and make sure you have all of the right documents. So for example, with veterans preference, you have to upload your DD-214. Make sure it is the correct copy of your DD-214. If it's not the member copy, it does not include the correct information that the HR folks need to have. And not only does it need to be the member copy, it needs to be a readable member copy. You don't want to upload a scan of a copy of a scan of a scan of a copy of a scan because I can't read that. It's too faint. And guess what? I don't squint. If I can't read it, I'm over it. Moving on, right? So if you are Schedule A eligible, you need to upload your Schedule A letter. These things matter.